So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the 37th um, AGM of uh, UMFC. And uh, I'd like to uh, do the acknowledgement of country and uh, acknowledge uh, um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as political custodians of the land in which we meet and pay respects to elders past, present, and emerging, and any uh, Aboriginal people with us today. So um, we'd like to particularly mention a few um, honoured guests with us today. We have um, uh, Kev, our uh, Mayor of uh, Wodonga. Kev, welcome. Uh, Kev has been a great supporter of the organisation over the years. It is uh, paid the uh, gig as a uh, radio personality and given the organisation great support. Um, we've also um, got a number of life members with us today. So Nancy, uh, welcome and thank you. Sue, welcome. Thanks. Phil, thank you. That's great. Um, and we have a number of um, apologies of life members too. So um, George Pender, who's having a great time in Anglesey. Um, Lester Sawyer, who's currently in the dental dentist's office as we speak. And um, Greg Pearl is probably doing something to his um, catalog at the moment. So his apologies. Um, and we should have John Taylor. We have a number of people uh, zooming in, I think, but I've got no idea where they are. But John, if you're out there in the virtual world, John Taylor, like never, welcome. Um, so I think everybody's done the right thing and got screened and put your name down. If you haven't, please do so, so you're uh, recorded as, as being here. And we'll get straight into the business. And the first item of business um, is to uh, go to the confirmation of minutes of the 36th AGM, which was held on the 29th of October last year. Now, I just need someone to move and second that from last year. Don't be shy. Any member can put their hand up and move and second. Hello, Steve, thank you. Nancy, thank you. So, Steve moved and Michelle, and Nancy second. Very good. Um, then what are you doing sitting down there? You're probably sitting up here so you can sign the next thing. And as you're coming past, um, you're on next. So you're doing the annual report. Do I need this? Oh, you don't need this. Anyone here okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you everyone for attending for those on virtual and to the white members that did start and obviously to also um, there has been some apologies to some of the board members who normally be here. Um, interestingly, uh, a couple of those working across the uh, health industry and other sectors have been really impacted still through the COVID scenario. So um, a couple of boards as well. So um, for those board members that are here also want to make uh, you would all have um, as you will hear the 2021 annual report. Um, always well presented. Um, it's a great read. Um, always very colourful and, and happy in, in how we present that, which is, which is fantastic. And it's been um, I, I will take any questions from it if you like. Um, if you want to some um, verification on Jackie will talk to the financial part. Um, for the two people that might have read the president's report, of which actually that's probably you know, there might have been one person who's read it, um, you would have seen it was fairly strong around uh, Luke. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about Luke through the day in the next five minutes because we do have a 20 minute window on that is all. Um, and I uh, would we'll like though to talk a little bit about what's happened with Luke. Clearly, um, big shoes to fill. We, we know that he, he's on the the end of an incredibly illustrious career with us, but what happens next? And uh, we're very happy to to watch him go off in the twilight and enjoy a fantastic life. I'll talk a little bit about that in my report to the top of the um, But I think it's it's interesting that um, probably for this group and for, for those observing what happens next, um, the board is um, currently in the process, very comprehensive process of finding uh, the new look, and it won't be the new look. Um, it'll be someone that has some, some skills like Luke, but also has some values like Luke. And perhaps some other things as well. We, we were talking about uh, Luke's tenure at 
30 certain odd years. Um, and the unlikely is that we can find someone who will look another person as the next person may not be that one. And what does that mean um, as an agency? What does it mean for the board? What does it mean for staff and the school? Um, so we are down that process. Uh, I suspect we'll get a good idea of what that looks like probably around January, February. Uh, and then we'll be you know, coming back to staff, coming back to, to the board around um, the, the replacement timing and, and who that person is. I'm a little bit excited, not, <laughs> not anything against Luke, but I am excited about who that person might be. Uh, the, there's a lot of things happening in, in the sector, of course. This person may not come from the sector, we don't know. It, it's, a, it's an exciting time. Luke has been fantastic through the process, we need to acknowledge that. So let's see, and uh, good luck. Anyway, let's push on. Any questions, happy to take those on that process on, 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 on the loop thing. I'm mindful of not concentrating just on loop. Yeah, and loop would be very clear on saying the agency's a lot bigger than him and his. But it is an important process. I want to make sure everyone's involved in that. We'll have some feedback uh, through the process. Nothing else for that? Uh, sure. That, yeah. <laughs> um, that's not the end of that. We will we will be obviously acknowledging Luke um, for this time, but not, not quite. Um, my job uh, to acknowledge to acknowledge uh, the preparation and accept the uh, edit report under 8.1.3 of the Rules and Constitution of Upnote Family Care Incorporated, the business AGM uh, that the uh, edit report presented by the executive on the transaction that the agency received on be received and tabled. I'll just need a member to move that and second that, please. Cool. Oh, it's easier now. So, Fran, there's a little time, but I feel Fran, thank you. Jackie, presentation financial reports. Yes, good morning. Morning or afternoon, everybody, and welcome. Uh, I'm here to do the riveting part, the financial report. Now everyone would have got one of those in their, their seat, and I'm sure you've all um, digested it very thoroughly. Um, I'm also happy to take any questions. I'll just probably draw your attention to just a couple of brief highlights out of the financial report. Uh, my treasurer's report is on page 13, and you can read that at your leisure. Um, I probably just want to acknowledge the really hard work of the finance team, um, uh, Ray and Liesl, and uh, through another quite challenging year, um, and they do a great job putting it all together and um, keeping everybody, um, in, you know, doing what they're meant to be doing. Um, so this year, I guess uh, you'll see with the little pictures on the financial report that our main source of revenue is from government. And so, you know, we are a little bit um, at the back and call of government and that presents a lot of challenges in, in our strategic planning and being um, around that and all of the uh, risks associated with being reliant on government funding. So the agency does a fantastic job of making sure that they comply with all, all the requirements that, that keep them in the running for that, for that funding. Uh, and our biggest cost is our employees, because our people are what do, you know, execute what we do as an agency. Um, and, and that's 80% of, of the service costs. And uh, just like to acknowledge everybody's part in that. Uh, the great work that the agency does. The agency recorded a surplus this year of 1.8 million. Now that sounds like a lot for a not-for-profit. Uh, and I've gone to a little bit of trouble in my report this year to just explain why there's profit. Uh, there's been a funky change in accounting standards that none of us have much control over. But what it means for us is it's the timing of our recognition of income is brought forward. So uh, we have to say it's our money when we receive it, even though 
we haven't always spent the money yet. Uh, and in the past, we've been able to kind of match those two things more closely. So the first year of adopting that um, new accounting standard has the biggest impact because we have a bit of a catch up. So I don't expect that we will see that type of surplus again. Um, and, and I guess it's just important to point out that without saying it's not a real surplus, it is, it's just a, a, a change in timing of bringing that to account. Right, so um, internally uh, as management and the board uh, and Ray and Liesl will continue to sort of try and balance our books on a more realistic what's meaningful to us basis. But for the financial report, we have to comply with what's called Australian accounting standards. But I look at a lot. Um, so that's probably really all I wanted to speak about in terms of the financial report. Um, I'm very happy to take questions. Um, my job is under item 8.1.5 of the Rules and Constitution of UMFC, um, being annual returns with the following motion that the audited financial statements be tabled and presented and accepted by the members of the AGM. Sunita. Thank you. Um, so my other job is to just confirm the appointment of the auditors for the 21-22 year. Uh, if we um, had one nomination received by the Secretary from Johnson's MME. They've been our auditors for a number of years. Uh, so the motion I'd like to put under 8.1.5 of the rules is confirmation of the appointment of the auditors Johnson's MME to be accepted by the members for the next financial year. It's a hard Right, so if there aren't any further questions, I'll do my bit in keeping to time for um Thank you. Okay, so the next um, uh, bit is the uh, elections for the board, and um, those who are keen, I'll speak to you as a first time person to go ahead. We changed our constitution to the board about three years ago uh, by expanding the board from 89 members, and the term has also changed from two years to three years. So this year is the third year of transition so we finally get to having everybody on the three year terms you know I mean? so we have three positions and we've got uh, three nominations so it's my pleasure to inform you as members that uh, the three members elected for their three year term uh, Liz Hetter, uh, Jack Vaughan and uh, Tracy Crone so uh, <laughs> they will start their three year term and as I say from here on in at each AGM there will be three positions uh, up for election. Um, and under the other constitution change we made, if there's a casual vacancy, because um, signing someone up for three years is going to be a bit daunting, so you need to reassure them that you can live your life. And if you move on, that's fine. Um, so if it's a casual vacancy, the person filling the casual vacancy fills out the remainder of that person's uh, term who they're succeeding. So that's anywhere from one to three years. But from now on, there'll only be three positions up for election. So Liz, Jackie, and Tracy are the three folks. So a round of applause. Thank you. Well, that's very good. Um, so now that means that. Well, they're all well done. Uh, so, right on, no, special, special business. Well, we haven't got any special business. So that's all good. So we're on the fun bit, which is the presentation. So, uh, so Lynn, are you doing the um, the bit? Do you want to come up? So while Lynn, our manager of um, out of home care, comes up to get our Betty the Spain Award, I'll just in the background. Betty, for those who don't know, was a long-serving member of Wodonga Council and uh, a long-serving member of our organisation. 
and the life member. And in her honor for all her work in the community, we about 20 years ago to the annual report, I think we started the bidding claim award to honor volunteers who are the real lifeblood and essence of our optional organization. So in this year's um, award, Lynn, over to you. Thank you. Well, we're very excited in our home care for this award this year. Um, just to give you a bit of background, I think you would all know when you see all the ads about Upper Murray and, and becoming a carer, it's a really tough gig. Um, we're very fortunate that Megan is one of our most therapeutic carers. She's just a gem to have, and the amount of times in meeting when the department will go, Cut Megan, <laughs> we wish we could clone you, Megan, and, and make many of you because the support you provide, the advocacy for not only the children, but all of their families, which is the hardest part of being a carer, to make sure that family feel inclusive. Megan is non-judgmental, she's supportive in any way. She does little things like with family contact, she'll send little presents for Mother's Day and, and photos and, and little things for Easter. She just goes above and beyond for these kids. So it's really, a, an amazing award and I'm, I'm glad that it's going to you, Megan, so congratulations. You could have told me, though. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You want to say something? Yeah. I'll hold that for you. Not particularly. <laughs> I really don't like any awards. I think when they rang me, I actually said, oh, no, I don't want that. Um, I am really thankful. Um, I'm thankful for the opportunity and I suppose just the recognition, as much as you don't do the recognition, it's nice to know that, that people are thinking about you and know what you do. Sorry, I'm not good at talking about this. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Can hope I'll say that because I'm always really about it. Thank you. Well, no, folks, that's it. <laughs> so, um, please, we've got a little bit of refreshments there, some uh, sushi and bacon and stuff. So, please, now, people, and catch up with each other. And thank you all for coming and uh, see you. Well, Oh, so you can see it. Well done. Thank you. Uh, <laughs>